introductions. Uh, my name's Adam Henderson. I am Vice President of Sales with APDS. Uh, AP, and we'll dig into a little bit on who APDS is and what we do. Um, the, I have another uh, unfamiliar face to you on this call. Mott, would you like to introduce yourself? You're on mute. So, Mott, oh, there you go. I'm having some technical issues this Monday morning. <laughs> Good morning, I'm Mott Middleton. I'm the Chief Revenue Officer for APDS and I'm just shadowing along with Adam in case there are any questions that need to land on my plate. And we'll go with Hollywood Squares. I see Peter at the top here. Wow. Well, hello everybody. I'm Peter Grabowski. I work under the expert direction of Dr. Morell and um, work at the Buford County Detention Center with the students there offering them a GED program. Uh, right now, that's as far as we can go because of limited access to any kinds of devices. The only computer access the inmates have, the students have, is in the library. Hello? We can hear you. Okay. Yeah, I was getting some feedback or something there. Um, and they they can do a GED ready practice test and they can do the actual GED on the computer, but that's the limited access they have at this point in time. Hmm. Okay. So we, yeah, we've done pretty well uh, with the ones that can be in the program and stay in the program long enough. Um, because of the itinerant nature, uh, we've lost a lot that, you know, had one more test to pass and then they right. go into the ether of wherever and we lose them. But yeah, it would be great if they could have a device that they could take back and utilize. Okay. okay. Uh, is it Garen? Yes, it is. Hello. Hi there, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, I am Garen Kofer. I am the Director of Adult Education uh, right here in illustrious Aiken County. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I see, I'm just kind of going down the list here. Grant. Good morning. My name is Colonel Quandera Grant. I'm the Director of Beaufort County Detention Center. Thank you. Christy, uh, Christy. Hi, I'm Christy Austin. I'm the director of Tri-District Adult Education up in York County, South Carolina. And we are not yet in our um, county detention center, but I am trying to gather as much information as I can um, as we work towards um, being able to have GED classes and do GED testing in that detention center. Great. Uh, hopefully we can help you out here. Uh, Juanita. Hi, I'm Dr. Morell, Director of Buford County School District Adult Education. Thank you. And uh, Mr. and Mrs. White -Wat Watson. Uh, Tisha White Watson, Director of Inmate Programs and Services, Buford County Detention Center. Thank you very much. Uh, did I miss anybody? Great. So uh, Lakeisha and I have been talking for a little bit um, about ways that we can provide some uh, technology and digital programming into um, various areas in South Carolina. So I want to uh, I'm going to kind of move a little fast, but feel free to jump in with any questions. Um, and then they'll de I want to make sure that we leave enough time at the end for conversation and whatnot also. So APDS, uh, we're an ed tech company. Uh, we provide uh, programming into secure facilities. So we only work with prisons, jails, psychiatric hospitals, juvenile detention centers, anywhere where you need that um, secure environment to deliver programming. We focus in on uh, four kind of key areas, education, rehabilitation, uh, workforce development, and reentry tools, all to have a uh, 
to uh, align to a career pathway to a, a living wage job post release more so more career less of a job so you have that pathway to success post release um, one thing that is unique with what we do everything that we do is at no cost to the justice impacted nor their friends and family so it's all state grant jurisdiction funded programs um, and uh, providing a hand up to the individuals uh, to be successful uh, post release. Uh, we all know once an individual is incarcerated, they have uh, extremely limited access to education and programs. Um, so using technology to be able to extend the reach of program staff uh, to a wider audience to provide uh, the the pathway to uh, career readiness and uh, being able to be employed post release. That includes the GED, which I've heard. Um, but it's also taking into account um, their mental health, their rehabilitation, and some of the credentialing that would be uh, used for a career. So looking at the whole individual, there's a whole host of reasons of why a person can be incarcerated. Um, so you know, putting that aside, how do we help them be successful as an individual? Uh, so we want to make sure that we're motivating them so they understand why they're engaged in programming and how they and how that will benefit benefit the in individual. We want to make sure that they we meet them where they are on their education level um, so we can go to as low as you know those phonetic and early counting skills through being able to sit down um, and successfully pass the GED. And then we can also work with local uh, college and universities to, to uh, provide post-secondary content. Um, and then we want to equip them uh, for life beyond incarceration. And you know that includes uh, industry credentials, uh, addressing substance abuse, addressing uh, criminogenic thinking, so taking into account everything rather than just a singular focus. So we have a you know I, we have a number of different programs. Everything we do is aligned to standards. Uh, we we believe in the diagnostic prescriptive method. Uh, meaning that if an individual already knows something, they shouldn't spin their wheels uh, continuing to work on it. They should be able to move forward and continue to uh, fill in the gaps in their education. We provide for multiple different learning modalities. Um, uh, it, everything that we do is designed for adult learners. Uh, Mott and I always use the term, there's uh, no fuzzy bunnies and race cars. It's real life situations into uh, understanding why you need to know multiplication and different things like that. Um, some of the programs that we provide on the education side, we have the, the, the tape programming uh, through high school equivalency, whether it's high set or GED. Uh, we, we can do high school credit recovery. So if they're that under 24 range and they actually want a, a high school diploma, we can provide some of the credit recovery pro programs. We can do the CASAS programming. We have digital literacy. So for individuals that may not be familiar with technologies, they can learn the basics of computers and different things. Uh, we have English language learning for the workplace. Uh, this kind of falls into two buckets because it's the um, if you are not a native English speaker, this is a great program to become fluent uh, in the English by learning by uh, learning English through a career of interest. Or if you are not, um, or if you're a native English speaker, but your grammar skills are not that great, you can actually you know uh, learn a lot using this program too, based on the um, uh, in, uh, career and interest of choice. Uh, and then we also have financial literacy, so covering budgets, should you rent, should you buy, different things like that. Uh, we don't do a very good job with financial literacy in this country, so you know, understanding the different, what your decision, your financial decisions, um, what when you make a financial decision, understanding how that ch affects other things in your life. Um, it's Monday, I apologize. So. Uh, <laughs> then uh, looking at the moving into the rehabilitative side of the house. Uh, so we have substance abuse, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, uh, most of which is self-directed and blended in learning. Uh, and it's designed to support and extend clinical reach, just like the education is designed to extend the educational reach. Uh, so we have a full CBT program. 
uh, tied to about 26 different criminogenic topics. We have a uh, recovery mental health library, which uh, I always make sure that I stress with the educators in the room that even though it kind of falls under that recovery mental health, it's also a great tool in the education area. So you could um, have someone read the articles around stress and then write a paragraph about summarizing what they've learned. Um, so, you know, just because it kind of falls under this doesn't mean it's not in your world also. Then we have uh, training camp for the mind, which is changing your mental aptitude. Uh, Recovery action plans. Uh, you know, how are you going to plan for uh, re-entry, uh, post-release? Uh, how do you plan to overcome addictions? <clears throat> Excuse me. And then there's also a true substance abuse program, which is self-reporting. Which is uh, we've been able to see a lot of interesting data uh, from different jurisdictions. On the workforce side. Uh, so we, we want to cover some of the, we cover those soft skills. So uh, ensuring that you understand that, you know, if your interview is at 11 o'clock, what do you need to do to prep ahead of that? You get up, shower, how are you going to get there? Those types of things. How do you network? Uh, we have industry approved work workforce credentials from uh, OSHA 10 to um, other uh, advanced manufacturing and safety technician type programs. We have uh, ready to work credentials. Uh, which is going through your your language and your math aptitude for uh, career, understanding that you have the basic, certifying that you have the ba basic knowledge of those two skill sets uh, to uh, be career ready. Uh, then we also have what we call National Corrections Works, which is res resume creation, career exploration tied to live job search. So if you are in Buford and you want to be a forklift technician and or a forklift driver, you can actually see within uh, 25 to 50 miles of the, the zip code of the facility what how many positions are actually available to be a forklift driver. So, um, you know, it allows them to make decisions and understand what careers are actually available to them when they're uh, returning back to uh, post release. This is a quick view of kind of what a student will see when they log in. Uh, they have the ability to explore all kinds of different programs that are, are available to them. Uh, then we also have a, a pathway that's going to push the push them along to where they've been. Um, so if they're assigned the GED program, it's going to push them along to make sure that they're continuing to work in that program. Then there's a number of tools that just come standard with the platform. So we have um, the master plan, which is geared to helping individuals understand how they got where they are and plan for post-release. Um, <coughs> excuse me, it was written by Chris Wilson, who is formerly incarcerated. Uh, it's a great book if you are looking for a book to read. Uh, he worked with us and created this plan for individuals. Uh, everybody has access to a full legal law library. Uh, on the through the platform on the tablet. The substance abuse treatment program uh, comes to every individual. We have a fully functional learning management system. So if you are, you know, so I struggle with fractions, <laughs> always have. Um, so if you know fractions is a struggle point for students, you can create a secondary uh, lesson in the LMS to deliver uh, extra work, extra practice or extra understanding for your students. In the LMS, we also have a uh, virtual classroom. So you're able to deliver, if we go back into a lockdown situation, you can deliver programming remotely, or you can deliver programming uh, across multiple facilities. Uh, there's a number of different ways to use virtual classroom. Uh, then we have secure community, Secure communication, which is messaging. So staff to resident, residents to staff only. Uh, text based, it's fully recorded and captured. So if a conversation goes sideways, we can, uh, staff can look at it and see what action needs to be taken. Uh, Colibri, if, you, if you're familiar with Khan Academy, I always say Colibri's Khan Academy on steroids. 
Um, it's the full library of Khan Academy. However, it provides uh, an extra wrap for, for teachers to uh, add additional quizzes and different things uh, on the on topics. Then we have National Corrections Library, which is a full ebook library uh, that's at no no additional cost to anybody. Uh, learners are able to check books out uh, for two weeks at a time, uh, and these are mostly frontless materials, so beyond the Gutenberg project. Then we have uh, National Corrections Radio that can be turned on or off. Uh, six radio stations that allow students to just listen to music. Uh, and then forms engine. So the forms engine, think of all the paper that is, all the paper forms that are in a facility. Those are able to be digitally recreated uh, through the platform and electronically filled out and delivered through APDS. Um, so there's a lot of different pieces that come just, uh, just kind of standard. On the administrative side, so this would be uh, admin and teachers would be able to have access to provide different, uh, you know, check messages, be able to um, create students and different things like that. So this is kind of like the hub. But then we also have the data piece. So we want to make sure that you know students are are, are engaged in the programming. Under we can see, and you'll be able to see uh, if you're looking at multiple facilities. What facility? Maybe one facility is doing a lot better in GED, another facility is doing better, say in TABE, and they can you can um, look at best practices and help others uh, engage. Through learning what the data the data is saying, so this is you know a number of different ways to kind of look at things. And we kind of talked briefly about this. So engagement tools. We have uh, you know the messaging functionality. I've uh, worked with one teacher in a different state. She worked in um, she went to a minimum security facility that had no programming set up classes for GED and really only worked with the students through messaging and she was able to have pre COVID. Uh, she started right before COVID, but she had three students pass the GED uh, by you being able to engage set up office hours and different things like that and be able to respond to messages. Virtual classroom able to instruct uh, remotely. Uh, we can do the incentive engine where students can earn uh, tokens uh, for completing work to unlock games and radio. Uh, we have Thrive, which is friends and family uh, video engagement, so they can earn uh, sessions to uh, see their friends and family through the tablet. And then uh, we can also do friends and family messaging, which is text only, no attachments. It's, li it's very limited in scope, but it's at uh, no cost to the individuals also. So I kind of went thing, through things pretty quickly, but I want to uh, be able to answer some questions. Um, does this align with some of the programming that you're already doing? Uh, what questions can I talk to you about or answer for you about the technology itself? Hello? Yes. I came in late. Um, does it um, keep up with time on task? It does. You can see Thank time you. on. You can see time on task by individual. You can also focus out and see housing unit. You can also see facility. The data can get as discrete as learning object or as high level as entire statewide information. So you can slice and dice the data any way you need to. OK, and I guess this is another question for our folks from the state office. Um, when it comes to students spending time on some of the other components of uh, this platform, uh, I guess what components of this platform could we use for hours of instruction? Once we make a commitment, um, if anybody decides to purchase it, then I will run that through the protocol to get it on that approved distance learning list. But that's just a paperwork thing. 
And the, the way our data portal works with the time on task, you will see, for example, if Adam spent 30 minutes on GED and then spent two hours in a book that he checked out from National Corrections Library, you'll see that that data split out so you can see where individuals are focused. So if you pre approve programs that can be counted just for time on task, what we would want to do is set up a data dashboard for you that would just call that information and put it in one discrete location so that you're not having to go through a lot of reports and remove um, hours that don't count towards engagement. If I may ask, um, this is Peter Grabowski. Have, have you had any of the correctional institutions, whether they're prisons or the other descriptors, um, have they partnered with any particular universities or colleges? Yeah, we have a number of so DCGL uh, is probably our largest that partners with post-secondary. So they they have relationships with um, Georgetown University, uh, MIT, Harvard, um, Ashland, Ashland University, and um, I'm sure I'm for uh, Howard University, American University. So they have they have a number of different partnerships that they and they may not all be credit bearing courses. Uh, but they they work with a probably a dozen different uh, post secondary partners. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me what the cost um, is for the facilities? Uh, there's always one in the crowd that asks the dollar number. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's me. <laughs> he signs so, the checks <laughs> yeah yeah uh so there's there's some variables so the uh, typically it runs about three to five dollars per day per student um i know that's kind of vague but you know the the tablet itself is going to run around uh four hundred dollars uh give it these are round numbers um the connectivity whether it's wi-fi versus cellular um so that's going to run about 500 to 800 dollars um and then the programs themselves uh if we're focused in on education uh itself then we're probably looking um then i'm probably thinking we can uh I'm just doing some rough numbers in my head about a uh, hundred dollars a year or so. Um, so I mean, I'll, there's a lot of different variables. So uh, I'm happy to have a deeper conversation to kind of get to uh, what it would actually make sense. But some questions that we would need to answer before jumping into how much it would cost would be: Are you using a cellular deployment, or are you? envisioning a Wi-Fi deployment. There's a vast difference in the price because of right. cellular bandwidth, of course. And then how heavy are you going to be on the programming? Um, do you want everything? Do you want a site license where an individual can take a, an assessment and get path based on the outcome of the assessment? Do you want to drive that? Do you want just one or two programs? Are you loading content into our learning management system and just planning on using the learning management system? There's a variety of ways to slice and dice it. Um, so once you get to a point of wanting to take a harder look at, at options, then Adam will create a series of cost proposals for you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Lakeisha and I have talked about a couple different things. That's um, so. So for the education component, like the TAVE GED, I saw you had the Colibri, or that was like the Khan Academy, Colibri right. on steroids, Khan Academy on steroids, basically. <laughs> um, what other uh, educational programs uh, can be loaded on there for TAVE instruction or high school equivalency GED instruction, or is that the only one? So we partner with um essential education 
and we deliver their TABE and GED programming through our platform. Um, and they also do uh, some other courses within uh, the education and the work skills uh, piece. So that's who we partner with and deliver. Um, the uh, are you thinking? Do you have something in particular that you're asking about? No, no. I was just curious okay. as to what um, what programs were were loaded on there for TABE and GED instruction. Yeah, so those are we partner with essential essential education, and we've seen huge success uh, using them as our partner in other jurisdictions. Okay, and that's TABE Academy, GED Academy. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Any other questions? Lakeisha, did I cover everything you wanted me to? Yes, I think you covered it about all. Um, unless anyone else have any other questions. Um, I do because have. Because of course, I don't think of it all. And I am, I did make a note to myself to research for what um, Etta said the additional content to make sure right. that it is approved for distance learning. And I'm pretty sure Mike is going to sign off on it because I've been telling him about ADPS for the last couple of months. <laughs> I, I really um, was impressed with the, the software options, but I'm going to leave the final answer to the folks in the field. Um, I think it was Christy, but anybody else who have questions, make sure you ask it all. I am loading everything that Adam has sent into D2L, so you don't have to try to remember a lot of the detail because anything that he's given me and writing, I am posting it to D2L as it um, comes in. I love Keisha. to hear that you're using D2L because that is the backbone of our learning management system. So you're already exactly. familiar with that. <laughs> Keisha, I, w I missed the first session that, that you guys had. Um, did, did we talk about cost to the programs? There is a spreadsheet in D2L that okay. that gives some cost information, but like um, Mott said, it's a lot of caveats to it, and it did show like a cellular option and a Wi-Fi option, but it's a lot of details that I cannot explain as to why we, this is the first session um, everything else has been going back and forth, just Adam and Ma and I. But because I knew I couldn't answer the questions, that's why I brought y'all to the table. But um, look through that and any questions from that, I will just send it on. And they are very good at responding to my 50 million questions so far. So um, all good. I think it'll work well. <laughs> and I did have one more question. That's because I'm new to this corrections. Um, education piece of adult ed. Um, this platform does not deliver the GED test or the GED readies. We would have to have separate um, computers, laptops for that, correct? This is only for the learning piece. Correct. This is only for the learning piece. Now we are um, talking to our friends over at Pearson View around um, criteria to allow the GED ready as well as the GED test to be delivered on the tablet. They have to establish their own proctoring rules around this. Um, so that's separate. Once they have to set up the protocol of acceptance of tablet, then we will be able to offer it. But right now it is it's months out. Any other questions? And you've got a great view of the tablet on the screen. I just want to point out that this is a 10 inch tablet. It's not a small like cell phone size. It's designed for academic engagement. Um, so it, it is a larger tablet there. Um, it comes with an optional um, corrections grade keyboard. It's a flexible keyboard, so if you need keyboards, um, keyboards can be provided and we take our ADA compliance very seriously. 
So we are always looking at ways to ensure that we are compliant with all the needs of our learners. Thanks for that. Welcome. Okay, that gave me a question. When you say it comes with the flexible keyboard, that's in, that means it's included in that cost or that's additional? It's, it's additional. An it's an additional okay. piece. If you do, there's a keyboard already on the tablet, but if you want a separate standalone keyboard, um, those can be provided. They're okay. relatively inexpensive. Don't yeah, ask me how much because I can't remember, but it's not much. Yeah, I don't know. they're like uh, they're about ten dollars each, I think. So. Well, I if you there aren't any more questions, I appreciate your time. Uh, feel free to reach out to me uh, or go through the Keisha, either whatever's best. Uh, happy to answer any questions. Happy to jump, jump back on another call and um, dive deeper into things as you discuss. If you all don't have, because um, I see it's just 2.30. I'm not sure if I scheduled this for 30 minutes or an hour, but if you all have hour. more time, um, Adam, you did mention having like a video where you can kind of show us what the tablet oh, yeah. looks like. I can. I, I would like to I, see that. I can actually jump in directly in if you would like me to. Give me a second to hang on. Let me stop sharing and then maybe. Sorry, it, I am not used to uh, Teams. There we go. Can you see the welcome screen? Yes. All right. So everything is credentialed. So everybody has their own unique username and password. Maybe. Helps if I spelled learner correctly. <laughs> there we go. So when a student first logs in, this is what they would see when they when they um, uh, first log into the tablet. So uh, up here in the little sandwich uh, is their menu to be able to uh, move between things. Uh, the platform can be translated to English and Spanish. Uh, not all programs are available in Spanish, however, but uh, if they need to go through the platform, they will be able to navigate through Spanish. So here is a little carousel. Uh, we just started to offer a master class. I think we have six or eight different classes that are available now. Uh, the master plan, and then uh, Since I've Been Down, which is a movie that we pushed out uh, to everybody. And then they can start scrolling through the programs that they're assigned. Uh, or they can view the full program catalog and see uh, if they're not enrolled in something. This is a demo account, so it's enrolled in everything. Uh, they can uh, click the enroll. Or if they want to view what the program is and get a better idea of what is included, uh, what they might learn about in that program. They can jump over and kind of explore. So breaking free is substance abuse programming. Uh, you, since you use D2L, you're probably familiar with the uh, the LMS. We can. Um, so here is GED Academy. Most of the programs that we offer are single sign on. So once they log in, they don't have to re log into a, another site. <laughs> so if you're this is GED Academy. Um, there's a quick assessment um, at the beginning to kind of level set where they where they should be within the program. So they Indivi so individuals and learners can kind of go through, go through and um, uh, pick a program that they're what, what they want to work on. 
Uh, everything comes with a calculator, uh, English to Spanish dictionary, and a, there's a thesaurus in there also. And while he's moving around through the programs, I just want to point out what he mentioned a minute ago, that there is more stuff in this demo than you would ever entitle for a learner. He has all the programs tossed in there and some of them are duplicative. So it, it looks like a big mismatch when you open it up uh, to a demo, but note that for a learner, it's going to be more directed. Correct, thank you. Uh, so this is the learning management system. So this is where I was saying if you wanted to create uh, an additional program around fractions uh, or whatever, so you can jump in and uh, we can create a shell and then you're able to upload uh, program uh, your own content. So a lot, there's a lot of different things in here. Um, some are self-created, some are uh, additional pieces that uh, like some of the credentialing and different things. Uh, we do provide a suite of TED Talks um that when we slide down here so all kinds of minds uh gender talk so all of this become comes standard within the lms so but this is where you'd be able to create all kinds of uh content uh for yourself also uh messaging so if you have messaging in your staff to learner and learner to staff, this is where the learner would be able to uh, write messages to Lakeisha. Hey, I'm struggling with fractions. Can you help me out uh, or whatnot? And we can also do attorney client uh, messages, but this is probably uh, not uh, where we want to start. I focus on the education piece. For the messaging, it's not just a free for all. I can send anyone a message. There has to be established roles within the system. So you are only going to see messages from your students. Right. Your students are only going to be able to message you or who you have designated to receive messages. The uh, students can track their progress on the tablet themselves. Uh, I'm not going to hit view transcript because it takes a little bit to pull it together, uh, but they'd be able to see their usage uh, over time. Uh, so like for the last 365 days, I have spent about an hour in my education programming, uh, but you'd be able to see, uh, they would be able to track everything and then they would actually be able to uh, see, create a transcript on that. Uh, if you, want to leave entertainment so this is where radio and games and different things would be this is set up in uh needing to spend tokens so i have to earn tokens to be able to listen to radio uh or play games we love that feature set from the standpoint of being able to lock the tablets to programming when they should be focused on programming so you don't run the risk of someone sitting in the back of the class engaged in a chess game instead of working on what you have assigned them to work on. So if you want the hours of eight in the morning till three in the afternoon for the tablets to be locked to just programming, we can do that and make them program only tablets. And then you can open the rest of the feature sets up in the, in the evenings. Uh, and this is forms. So these are some generic forms that uh, <laughs> I guess our support team was working on. Uh, they can you can create um, you know check boxes, fill out different things, uh, and then once you hit submit, that is electronically delivered to an email address that you that you specify. So then uh, that person or group would be able to respond accordingly. So it's a quick view of the programs and what the actual uh, platform kind of looks like. Let Adam know if you'd like to dive deeper into any of the areas.
the quiche, is there something I should uh, jump deeper into? The one with um, this Miss Watson, uh, the college essentials. Could we um, sure. speak more about that one, please? Right. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. Huh, maybe I don't actually have that one. Oh, uh, yep, there it is. Sorry, wrong tab. So uh, this is also part of Essential Ed. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, wants you to kind of give an idea of how long you plan to study. So if we jump into math. So there's a quick placement test. So it says I'm at basic. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So this yes. is so uh, mastery on whole numbers, yeah. fractions, decimals, percents. Uh, it won't let me unlock the others until I get past the basics. So there's, uh, and then the nice thing is there's the workplace connections. So uh, why do you need to know this? Um, and aligning to best practices in education, you'll have audio, you'll have video, you'll have drag and drop, you'll have fill in the blank, you'll have multiple choice, true, false. So all of the types of questions that you would see on academic engagement are picked up in the, the courseware. I was trying to see if it gave me, um, I think on the teacher side, it'll give me everything that, that, that this course will cover. I don't think I have it in here on the student side. But each section is going to want you to do a quick writing, uh, quick uh, placement. Um, And that speaks to the diagnostic prescriptive nature of engagement. So the basics on the writing is going to be uh, sentence structure, uh, spelling capitalization, uh, some grammar and different and common spelling errors. And then on the reading side, um, text or meaning from text, uh, analysis, and literary works. So that's the kind of the first section. <laughs> so it's a little bit beyond um, the GED. Anything else you'd like me to dive into? OK, Lakeisha, so um, do you want questions to run through you or do you want them uh, or are people able to reach out to me directly? It's up to you. I'm good either way. Uh, they can reach out to you directly because the decision will have to be made on the local levels. I can't make a decision for them. OK. And then um, let me see if you got we got a couple more minutes, right? Yes. I want to show. Hang on. 
ignore my emails. Um, I want to look at. So this is some of the data analytics um, real quick. Hold on, maybe I'm going to delete, but I'm still seeing the tablet screen. Yeah. We are. Yeah. Hang on. Hey there. Um, I wanted Adam. I wanted to see what the e uh, what was under the reentry tab, please. Uh, can you see the tablet screen again? We can. Okay. Uh, so the what we mostly have under reentry, which I'm not sure why it's not tagged that way. Uh, the master plan would fall under that. Um, you, there is the wellness recovery action plan. Uh, there's one for addictions and there's one specifically for reentry. Um, and then uh, we have a couple of uh, basic courses in the LMS about um, coming home and helping the individuals plan where they're going to stay and and different things like that. Um, I have to make a note for product as to why they're not tagged that way. Uh, in the platform here. There's some parenting skills in reentry. There's um, you know, a roundup on digital literacy and financial literacy in reentry. The only person you cheat is you. Uh, Tupuku is in our reentry suite. Um, there's a lot of courseware around um, you know, trauma informed engagement and um, planning. Lots of planning, some soft skills components are in reentry, and we can shoot you a list of all of the courses that are available in the reentry suite. Uh, so I wanted to just kind of show uh, a little bit on the analytics side. Uh, I'm going to go into a couple of uh, demo things. Um, <laughs> So if we go into, I thought that was Gotham, sorry. So here is a, uh, to kind of show you some of the overview that you'd be able to see. So Gotham City, um, over the last, this is showing uh, like three years, they've used 1400 tablets, uh, 3600 students, you can see the number of hours uh, used on the platform and then you can kind of scroll down and see the this is what Mott was alluding to about the um, specific programs that learners are using. Then you can see the students. Uh, so if we wanted to switch and look at um, the number, Kevin is using 73 different courses uh, within the platform. Then you can see uh, the number of uh, tablet students and hours spent. And then we can jump over to the individual. It's not showing me. Click on your huh. active students. Will it let you go from there? No. No, he's got it locked. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to go into any live data just because of uh, security points. But this kind of gives you an overview and then you can drill down into the individual uh, and look at what uh, Kevin is actually spending their time on um, and be able to see, you know, is he spending uh, 240, uh, 240 days just reading books or is he actually engaged in uh, his education programming and different things? And these can all be customized. So if you're focused strictly on TABE or on GED or whatever, uh, we can set up reports to deliver on a weekly basis uh, geared towards the engagements and the metrics that you need to uh, see. And because we monitor engagement so closely, you can actually do some neat data dives and look at days of the week where you have more student engagement, hours of the day where you have more student engagement. You can really start getting creative with your courses and your instructional time around when your your learners are more um, inclined to engage with academics.
yeah, I, I don't remember which Kevin was. So, <laughs> but if we look at AJ, uh, he uses the the tablet for 11 days. He's been in three different courses. Uh, 90% of his time is though been in entertainment. Uh, so you can kind of see you, while Adam's doing really well, look at all the information that or all the time spent. But once you dig in, I may be just listening to the radio. Um, so, but you can gauge all that and then be able to uh, make corrections in, in, in uh, adjustments in your communications to the individuals. So. We're almost at time. Uh, any other questions? I think it was a great presentation. Thank you. So feel free to reach out to myself or Lakeisha. Uh, and happy to answer any questions. Happy to jump back on and show uh, some things in a deeper dive if needed. And I will post this video in D2L for those of you that want to share it with other people in your program or with your um, detention center. I know Buford is represented, but the other detention centers, it may prove beneficial to share it with the um, detention center staff. And my the detailed information, I don't think that I have that in what Adam sent, the re-entry details. But if you send include me on that email, I can post that in D2L also for everyone That'd be great. access. We'll get that over. And as you're talking to facilities, if they need a deeper dive in safety and the back end safety that we provide with our engagement, we'd be happy to jump on the phone and talk them through that piece as well. Sounds good. Thanks, everybody. Thank so I appreciate much. your time. Have a Thank great day. You.